Florida Bass Program in Tennessee came about as a result of interest among the fisheries folks in Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and also as a result of numerous requests from the anglers in the state of Tennessee. We are in our second year of evaluating the program. We stocked some last year, we've already stocked some this year, and we intend to stock some next year and for years to come. We would like to provide the fishermen with a greater diversity and a good possibility of catching some larger largemouth bass in the waters of Tennessee. We contacted the state of Florida and uh, asked them if there'd be any possibility that we could uh, obtain some Florida bass fingerlings for stocking in our agency lakes in, in lakes in Tennessee. And we requested about 50,000 to begin with. We ended up with 15,000, although what we requested to begin with would have been maybe an inch to an inch and a half long. What we ended up with were two and a half to three inch long fingerlings. So we went down to Blackwater Fish Hatchery located near Pensacola, Florida. Our guys from the Humboldt Fish Hatchery went down there and found out a little bit about the Florida Bass Fenglands and their program. And early the next morning around four o'clock they loaded up the fish and took off back to Tennessee. New home. Florida to Tennessee. Now this is not a Florida bass. They hadn't been stocking them that long. But the hope is that if they catch on, there'll be a lot more bass in Chickamauga this big, if not bigger. This project here, especially at this level, Chickamauga is really unique in that, that it's been 15 years of consistent stocking. Like I said, we put over two million fish in. We've stocked every year with the exception of 2011. Uh, we actually had met and achieved our goal by 10 years into this project on Chickamauga in 2010, our project goal was to implement 15% of the Florida genes into the largemouth bass genome. And by 2010, we had increased that to 33% through our genetic studies. We have regulations that are in place for the size limits and the krill limits. So we also monitor with krill surveys to keep an eye on the fishing pressure that we have and how that has increased over time with the popularity of the reservoir that the largemouth bass have brought in. We also do electrofishing surveys. Uh, we'll look at the length and weights and conditions of the fish. Uh, it tells us a lot about the population dynamics and uh, just keeping a real good eye on that population. Mike says he thinks it's very possible a new state record could come from Chickamauga Lake. Chris <laughs> Coleman agrees. In February 2012, Coleman was just 16 ounces away from the new state record with a 13 and a half pound bass. TWRA doesn't keep official lake records, but... I said, well, is that not the biggest one you've ever seen, Felix? He said, well, yeah. I said, well, I'm calling it the lake record. He said, well, it's your fish. You can call it what you want to. Now, a lot of people always ask, well, what's the biggest fish that you've seen out there? And we, we have seen some eight, nine pounders shocking, but most of the big fish that we've been able to uh, look at and do research on have actually been caught by anglers, either on, and while they're just out fishing, or in tournaments, and they've been gracious enough to share those fish with us. Uh, we've taken a fin clip, and then the fish have been released back into the wild. This week, a record-sized field of college anglers are in Dayton, Tennessee on Lake Chickamauga at the Collegiate Bass Fishing oh, Open. Yeah. Located in southeastern Tennessee in Ray County, Lake Chickamauga has consistently produced some of the biggest bass in the country. Many are calling this lake the bass capital of the south. Chickamauga is currently rated number six on Bassmaster's Top 100 Lakes in America. And uh, the past several years, we've been experiencing uh, off the chart uh, stringers of, of bass, as, as many as a five bass limit weighing 49 pounds recently this, this spring. TWRA tells us that the next state record is swimming here in Lake Chickamauga. The current state record is 14.6. I'm Gabe Keane here in Dayton, Tennessee on Lake Chickamauga, the new bass fishing capital of the south, and I just caught the new state record. So Gabe, tell us about the big day out on Chickamauga there a couple weeks ago. School up here got canceled for illness on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, so I got a couple days where I could go practice for a tournament. It was a uh, catch ministries tournament on Chickamauga out of Grasshopper Creek. So I went down Wednesday night and fished Thursday and Friday, just regular practicing for a tournament. Thursday, caught a couple of fish, real windy and snowy. I was 
kind of down, wasn't really on anything. And Friday, um, I went back to kind of a pattern that I thought, you know, I'd catch some fish on and uh, put in about 9.30, put in down at Chester Frost and run around and tried a few things and uh, caught a fish at about 10 or 10.15 on a rattle trap. Wasn't getting a ton of bites, just I caught that one fish and then at 11.45, that's when the 15 pounder hit and then my practice day was over. I've heard a few interviews that you've given to other people and uh, talking about that day and you weren't afraid to tell everybody what you were fishing with. No, no, shoot no. I was, uh, I was fishing with an umbrella rig, it's a Tennessee rig, it's five wires, three hooks. Uh, Dixie Custom Rods makes it, they call it a Viper rig. This time of year down there, the umbrella rig is just hard to beat. It's had Zoom, swimming Super Flute Juniors, that's a shorter swim bait around the outside. And uh, the one in the middle was a regular Zoom swimming Super Flute, and it was just a little bit bigger. That day, uh, you know, there's times when you get a call and somebody says, hey, I think I've got a, a record fish here. And uh, the call I got was from one of my managers, and he knew Gabe and said, hey, it's showing 15 pound, three ounces. Uh, on his handheld scales in his boat, and I thought this one may have a possibility here. Uh, it was uh, far enough above that even if the scales had a little flaw in it, it was going to be close. Um, so once he got through the process of having it certified, and I got that call that it had been on certified scales and that it had beat the record, uh, then it just went wild. I was getting calls from, of course, co workers, the public, uh, marina operators, and of course, talk with Gabe and uh, had a lot of media calling and a lot of questions and it was about an eight to 10 hour phone call event for me. Now you and I grew up in the same area, uh, but tell the viewers about yourself. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm from Meigs County, Decatur. Uh, went to Meigs County High School and uh, down there you're always close to woods and water. And uh, my family, my dad, my grandparents and all my friends, you know, they hunted and fished and I'd done all that stuff growing up just like, you know, anybody else. and. Uh, it just it stuck with me. Talk a little about your mentors. Well, my dad, first of all. I mean, uh, anybody who's their, their dad hunts and fishes, uh, you're gonna end up going with them a lot. And, um, and my grandfather, you know Harold, and they, they both spent a lot of time in the woods and on the water, therefore I did too. And I grew to like it and love it, and they encouraged it, and it's, it's just a good thing. And those are probably my two biggest mentors. And then later in life, you start fishing some tournaments and start fishing them as a non-boater and stuff, and, and the boaters that you get drawn with. You call them mentors in a way too. You learn a lot from people that you fish with. After college, you, you wind up at Campbell, Campbell County High. Right. Tell us a little bit about how you got here, and, and there's a special team that you coach here. Tell, tell us a little there bit about is. that. Well, out of, out of college, I worked for a little while while I was looking for a job, and uh, Campbell County High School called, and uh, we'd been talking some, and it, Never quite worked out with teaching position and coaching position and finally they called and said they had a uh, world history teaching position and a, uh, a position to coach the, the fishing team. And uh, so I, I mean, how do you say no to that? But I do, I coach the fishing team and I teach world history here at Campbell County High School. The team, this is, we're in our third year compared to the size of other teams around. We have one of the biggest teams. As far as success, we've been, we've been very blessed with good fishermen and good boat drivers. It all sets up for uh, having a good year. And last year, we fished a lot of tournaments, fished some Bass Pro Shop High School tournaments. We had one boat that won the first tournament, uh, Craig Wilson and Trevor St. John on Cherokee, and then they qualified for the Classic and won it. We always have boats up in the top 10. We do, we have a good team. Yeah, I've been on the team since uh, the first year it started until now, and it's, uh, it's improved a lot. You know, you get a lot of great op opportunities to go fish against different schools and different big tournaments. And yeah, you get a lot of college opportunities. Gabe, uh, he helped me try to get on down there with his dad at Bryan. And so you still get a lot of college opportunities and get baits and stuff, and it just helps you out tremendously. And it also helps us um, with our grades and how we're doing in school, because we have to have a see average so we can fish our tournaments. And it also helps us get our name out there if we want to fish like professionally or get in college, which also gives scholarships, and that's a good um, door to the colleges too. Uh, this is my freshman year. I've wanted to fish since like the sixth grade of middle school. 
I tried to get like a fishing team started at the middle school, but they wouldn't let us. So ever since, I've been really excited to get up here and fish. And so what's some of the highlights that stick out in y'all's mind, y'all's tournaments and stuff? Well, recently, um, me and my partner Greg Wilson, we got to fish the Bassmaster um, National Tournament Classic, and um, one of the biggest highlights um, was just walking across the stage and seeing all the thousands of people there and representing our team on national level. So you were on the same stage as the big boys, huh? Yeah. Who's your mentor? Who's taught you how to fish? It would probably be my dad and then just some of my friends that I've grown up with. You just learn from everybody. Uh, mine would probably be my dad and probably my papa. It would definitely be my dad and uh, D. Wilson, who also owns them. Dixie Custom Rods, which is what Gabe caught his 15-pound uh, on, on Chickamauga. He makes the rig for that. And the students at the school, you know, they reap course when we got to our tournaments. And the school, um, if we have a big tournament like we went to the Nationals, they gave us a couple of days off to um, go practice so we could do better in that tournament. But they support us tremendously. I think TWR is doing a great job, because I've heard about a lot of Chickamauga used to be called Sickamauga, and you guys um, started um, doing the for the strain largemouth in it, and it's just turned into an absolute freak. And it's a um, 49 pound limit of bass by Roger Brown, and 15 pounder by my coach. So you guys done a great job on that. With it, with this process of seeing a project that, that we're in the 15th year of it, uh, it's really rewarding to see an outcome like this of, of a record fish that, that has been established and it's broken a 60 plus year record fish that we've had in Tennessee. It's great as a biologist to be part of that. It's, it's great to uh, see somebody like Gabe that's been such a great recipient of this. He's been uh, very gracious uh, to and supportive of the agency for anything that we've needed. And it's just been a, a, a process that has kind of come to a, a pinnacle uh, with this record fish and who knows where it'll go now. The fish that I caught, I mean, you, you just don't find that everywhere. And TWRA, through me talking to them, I mean, I didn't know that this had been going on for 15 years. I mean, that's a long time to, to be working on one project. And uh, I, think, I think they're seeing it pay off and see that it's working and it's a good thing. But they, they do a great job, uh, everything they do, woods and water. But on the water, Lake Chickamauga with the Florida Strain Stocking Program, uh, it's amazing. I mean, they took a good lake and they've turned it into an amazing lake. It's really been a, a surreal moment. Uh, even when we were looking at the fish, it was uh, when you actually thought about and observed that you were looking at a state record fish uh, that people had, a lot of people had pursued for over 60 years and that I was uh, having the moment of being able to evaluate that fish and interview the angler that caught it and that a lot of people's careers had come and gone in fish management that never got to be a part of something like this. And I was very appreciative, uh, very excited about it. And it brought a lot of things into focus about the, you know, the importance of good management. Uh, also the excitement that the angling community, community can have uh, around a fishery when it's like it is on Chickamauga. And it, it really uh, gives you a lot of fuel to go forward in the future and uh, you know, and try to do the best you can for the resources as we, as we always do.